Sandy. Hi, Judy. How are you? I'm great. Good. We're here today for the Emergency Assistance Fund, and uh, today Randy's going to talk to us about uh, a little of this. Um, she does a lot of short hair stenciling, which a lot of the creative stuff we see is more the longer haired dogs, but she actually does a lot of really cool stuff with shorter haired dogs. So tell us a little about how that gets started, Randy. Well, actually, it was quite interesting. I had seen a clip of some young guys doing some coat carving on a horse. And I was new out of grooming school. You know, Pina was my, my teacher. And uh, the one thing that she gave me was impeccable clippering skills. Yep. So I said, well, if these young guys can do this, I can do this on a dog. There you go. So I said, Pearly Rose, come here. <laughs> And that's how it got started. And then over time, I've just perfected it and perfected it. Um, one of my main uh, designs I'm known for is the rose, which is really nice in a shop because it's easy. I can do it in under 10 minutes. And I've been known to charge as much as $90 for okay, one well, rose. I was going to get onto that because I'm all about making the money. So I was like, well, what, can you, what can you make for that? Yeah, so. I've, I've charged as much as $90 for one rose on a hip. Wow. And it takes me 10 minutes. So it's a great income booster. Um, and the reason I started with the rose is because my dog's name is Pearly Rose. She's a black pity. So her skin is white. Oh. So when I carve a rose, I actually get a pearly rose. Oh, there you go. So it just, you know, stuck with her. But when I'm teaching seminars, one of the biggest things that I hear is people tell me that they can't do this freehand. I'm here to tell you, everybody can do it freehand. You I just, would have been one of those if I'd been in a seminar because I'm like, <laughs> I can't hardly draw a straight line. And when I write and there's not a line, it goes up the hill. So. <laughs> the trick is, is knowing how to do it. So I just drew a simple rose just a few minutes ago. But the trick is having a piece of acetate sheeting, which you can get at pretty much any art supply store. And I like the little bit thicker one and a Stabilo pencil. These will write on plastic, they'll write on glass, metal, anything like that. And the nice thing is, is you can wipe it off. Oh, cool. Now with acetate, you'll probably want a little bit of alcohol or like a whiteboard cleaner. Okay. Because otherwise it'll leave a streak. But if you were to take... Now, so does, does it matter which side of that you use? No. No? No. Okay. Either side. So if you take a drawing and you put your acetate over it, and I suggest when somebody's starting out that they use a little scotch tape so that it doesn't move, it's easy. And then if you take your Stabilo pencil, you can actually, and I'm just gonna do this very rough and rudimentary, but there you'll you see that your lines are there. So if you do this, and you do it over and over and over again, and just keep wiping it off, and if you do this until you can draw this Without this underneath it, you're ready to go to work on a dog. That's cool. And it's as easy as that. Anybody can do it. And you can do it with any design? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't, when you're doing coat carving on a dog, you don't want something that's very, very, very intricate because what will end up happening is it'll bleed. One line will bleed mm -hmm. into the next. And then, you know, if that happens, you can use a black pastel or whatever color the dog is and you can kind of touch it up. But if it's a client's dog, you don't want your client to have to do that. So not too intricate of a pattern. Um, so the keep it simple. Yes, the KISS method. The KISS method, yep. The KISS method works well. Also, another key to short haired dogs, you know, you always hear about if you shave them, you'll damage hair follicles. Right. Well, what I've learned, and with Pearly Rose, Pina will tell you there's never been any damage. What I do is I let my clipper do the work. So the key is, is always going against the grain. Okay. And it, when you do that, you go very slow, so you're not bending hair follicles backwards, and you let the clipper do the work. Okay. And, you know, it'll just cut the line nice, and, and then you can go back, and you can clean it up. Sweet. That's awesome. And those are my tips for today. That's awesome. Thanks, guys, for joining us here and uh, be sure to support the Germers Assistance Fund.